Four U.S. bases in the Middle East were attacked by Iranian-backed fighters since Wednesday. These attacks all coming after the U.S. carried out an airstrike on a weapons storage facility in Syria, and President Biden is defending his decision. Are the retaliatory strikes working? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're working in the sense that we're hitting the targets we're seeking. Our troops in Iraq and Syria have come under fire 46 times since October 17th. Florida Congressman and Iraq War veteran Corey Mills joins me now. Uh, Congressman, good morning to you. So it seems like Iran said, we see your airstrike on our weapons depot in Syria, and we're going to raise you four strikes on U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria over a 24-hour period. Clearly, what we're doing right now isn't working. So what could the Pentagon be doing to prevent these strikes from taking place? Well, look, the bottom line is that uh, all of our enemies seek weakness, and they see weakness within Joe Biden, his administration. You know, you didn't see these types of attacks during the last administration under President Trump. But in fact, whenever President Trump carried out a military operation, it was actually our adversaries who would call and reach out to him to say that they have to show face, but that they will not actually impact any of our soldiers. We see where Iran has become emboldened. We see where China continues to utilize them as their proxy militia. And now you've got them going off and making over 40 plus attacks just in the couple last month or so uh, on U.S. bases across Iraq. This is as a result of his inability, and I back it all the way up to 2021 during the Afghan botch withdrawal, whenever Biden and his administration had showed no plan, no strategy, and no willingness to actually hold our adversaries accountable. And so what you're going to continue to see, whether it's in Ukraine, whether it's the, with the, the threats that are going on in the Taiwan Strait, whether it's what we're seeing in Israel by Hamas, or whether it's in Iraq. The China-Russia-Iran-North Korea geopolitical alignment, they feel very emboldened, right. and they are willing to carry out these attacks. They don't think there's going to be any type of retaliation that's actually meriting what they actually have, have, have given to us. Well, emboldened is a good word to use, and 56 service members have been hurt so far, 25 with traumatic brain injuries. And the Pentagon recently said that these attacks by Iranian proxies, they're not meant to warn or scare. They are meant to kill. So what if that does happen? What if a service member does die? Where does that leave us? Well, I can tell you right now, the first thing that we need to be looking at is the uh, going with our international partners and looking to so go ahead and say, if these are Iranian proxy targets, whether it is Hashi al-Shabi, whether it's Sabi al-Bin Haq, whether it's anyone, Qatab, Hezbollah, all of the ones who are Iranian backed militias in Iraq, we need to be going after their headquarters. We need to be utilizing the Iraq national intelligence. And we need to be explaining to our allies that if we are here in your nation trying to help support you in your efforts for training or equipping or trying to fight things like ISIS, that you need to be stepping up to these Iranian proxy militias as opposed to trying to shield them and allowing them to continue their attacks against America. Iran said recently that the U.S. if the U.S. doesn't broker a ceasefire, we will be hit hard here at home. Um, should we take that warning seriously? We should take every one of these warnings seriously. Look, we know for a fact that October 7th in Israel is the equivalent of our 9-11 here at home, their intelligence failures. The problem is, is that every American knows it. Every Republican in the House of Representatives has been fighting it. Our border is the number one issue. We must secure our border. We know we have hundreds every single month that are coming across that are on terrorist watch lists. We know we've got millions sitting here in our, our country uh, who are not actually uh, following or being uh, 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 preceded by, by ICE because they're being prevented. And so we really need to take these types of threats seriously. We're going to have our own 9-11 again. And I think that that's very, very possible. And this isn't a fear monger, Carly. This is just the realities of what we're allowing across our borders. When you're talking about thousands of Afghans, people from Yemen, people from Iran, people from Russia, people from mainland China. We've got gangs like MS-13 coming across. This is all in an effort to go ahead and try and utilize or carry out some type of an incident here at home. And we need to ensure that we're prepared and ready and take it very seriously. Absolutely. And if we don't know who is in our country, how can you possibly feel safe, especially during a heightened terror alert? Congressman mm -hmm. Corey Mills, thank you so much. It's also Veterans Day tomorrow, so we want to thank you so much for your service as well. Thank you, and thank you to the brave men and women who continue to wear the uniform and those who have served in the past. You should that. be our priority. The government must do more. Amen to that. Happy Veterans Day, sir. Thank you for joining us. Happy we Veterans you. Day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.